problem that I'm finding within myself is that I don't feel like I actually love myself. Well, that's that over explaining that goes. And I feel like yeah. it's holding me back. Well, just stop it. That's not what's. You guys good for a minute here? So the reason that you feel like you don't love yourself is because there are things you want that aren't coming. And so you've got these old records playing that say, I must not be deserving. So you're trying to figure stuff out. Humans keep doing it. You make up so much stuff. You make up so much stuff. There's only one reason. Why do you think you don't love yourself? I, I don't know. I just feel like I genuinely don't like myself. When you came up here, you were different. <laughs> Something's gone terribly wrong. When you came up here, you were different. You said something about, I feel like I've just what? Did you say? I just said, I feel like I just want a Grammy and I need to give my acceptance speech. Well, what's up with that? I do feel that way. I do feel that way, Abraham. I'm just, when I get down to my core and I sit with myself and I meditate and I reflect on Reagan, my, that's my name. I just feel like there's a disconnect between me and her. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's really how I feel though. We're trying to lighten the mood here a little bit. Everything that happened before you sat down was to build a basis to talk about this. And it doesn't happen all at once. But did any of you gather from what you heard us say so far here today? that you're making it harder than it needs to be. Did you hear us say that? Okay, that's for you. Did you hear us say that you're trying to figure things out and you're coming to all kinds of erroneous and flawed premises? That's for you too. Did you hear us say that you were pure positive energy when you decided to come into this physical body? Well, why would something change once you get here? Words don't teach, it's only life experience that teaches. So from the life experience that you're living, you've come to the conclusion, I must not be good because I'm not getting what I want. Therefore, I don't like myself. So we're wanting to appeal to your logic from everything that you heard us say about the law of attraction. Do you think that someone who does not like themselves is gonna let all of the lovely stuff that's in their vortex come into their experience? But here, the way it all sort of feeds on itself. I don't like myself, and I keep saying that because for whatever reason, I don't like myself. I'm admitting it, I don't like myself. And because I don't like myself, I don't let stuff in that nice, worthy people get. And because I'm not letting in nice, worthy stuff that nice, worthy people get, then I don't like myself. And because I don't like myself, I don't let it in. And because I don't let it in, I don't like myself. And because I don't let it in, I don't like myself, I don't let it in. And because I don't let it in, I don't like myself. And because I don't like myself, I don't let it in. In other words, we're wanting to point out the habit of thought and appeal to your logic that you got to find another way. And so admitting that I don't like myself, there are a lot of people that would say, well, that's the first step. You got to admit it. But all day here today, every chance that we've had, we've been saying, don't go back to what was before. That's the thing. 12 steps is just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. And it's helped so many people, but it also holds people in this place. When you keep admitting that you're flawed in that way, then you just keep not letting in. You just keep not letting in what you want. And so people say well you've got to admit you've got to admit it you've got to own it and we say the way you own it is by feeling negative emotions saying oh, oh I got some negative emotion can I think of anything that makes me feel better well I know I don't like myself because I've practiced that for a while and I even admit it to Abraham and Abraham gave me a really hard time about it and I even feel bad about that so I'm not gonna try to like myself in order to change this horrible feeling in my solar plexus maybe I'll take a nap maybe I'll feel better or maybe I'll take a swim or maybe I'll take a walk or maybe I'll do anything to sort of break that cycle of that but you have we love you so much you have we love you so much and this volume isn't about anything other than intensity that we are projecting to Esther and her translation of it because we want so much for you to hear this you keep feeding the very thing that you do not want you've got to find another way to do it you've got to do something about it because it's like you think if you plead to enough others that someone will Esther told the story the other day. She said, I was giving birth and I wasn't liking it. And I thought, I can't just 
drop the class. <laughs> that worked last time I was doing something I didn't like. I can't call my mother and ask her to push the button, pain-free labor. Esther realized in that moment that this was going to happen and that railing against it was of no value. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. We're really asking you to stop explaining how you feel about not liking yourself in an effort to get somebody to explain to you how likable you are. You're incredibly likable, but you are screwing up your point of attraction with this kind of shit. You just can't get to where you want to be. You just have to accept that there's one thing and one thing only that you can do something about and only you can, only you. And that is find some way to feel better. And if it's not on that subject, then let it be on that one and that one and that one and that one and that one. And when you do that just a little bit consistently, then something will happen and you'll connect the dots and you'll make the correlation between how I felt and what I did and how that improved feeling came and then what happened because words don't teach we could talk to you and only you for the whole rest of the seminar and for the whole rest of your life and Esther's and you know what it would not make any difference unless something that we say makes you say oh, okay okay I will do something about the way I feel other than ask somebody else to feel a way about me so that I can feel better about me. So, and that's what I feel like I do because I don't, I feel like I seek it out outside of myself. You know what I mean? And I just set myself up for huge disappointments and letdowns. You know what I mean? Seeking. Well, you're not going to stop this anytime soon. And we understand this. You're really stuck in what is Itis. And even more than stuck in what is Itis, you're stuck in how I got here, Itis, and how I need to defend where I am, Itis. And here's what it is. We know we're way over time, but we're going to keep doing this just for a minute. So here's why. Take three deep breaths and just listen to us. Here's why. Here's why. You're born knowing how worthy and fortunate you are and when something isn't going right or even more you feel like you've expressed here at so many levels of your being you know how really incredibly off that is and so you explain it by saying so I just don't like myself and we want to say to you, we can't like you enough for you to like yourself. Your inner being adores you in ways that we can't even find words to explain to you. But that doesn't make any difference either. Where are you going to get this liking yourself that you're looking for? It's sure not going to be by explaining that you don't like yourself. That's not going to take you in the direction of it. But we want, as we've been talking to our other friends here, we don't want to hit that head on because we can't get there with you. It's so baked in with you right now. So you got to stay off that subject of how you feel about yourself and focus on something else and see if you can distract yourself from this momentum long enough for some good stuff to get in so that you can say, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, now I see a little bit. You cannot get to where you want to be from the vantage point that you're approaching it. It will not work. It will not ever work. It will never work. I'm pretty nervous, so I'll just ask, um, what is source? I, so I've heard you say source and then source energy. <clears throat> and then there's um, the inner being. So what is the relationship between the inner being and then there's source energy and then there's source? So you know how our friend was talking about the momentum of anger. Mm -hmm. So... If you take the emotional scale and you start at the bottom and you move up, the momentum builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. See right here where it says tipping point? Yeah. At that tipping point, it's like everything flips and then momentum becomes more and more and more. And so at the very top is joy and enlightenment and empowerment. And that's where that source energy is. So it's like the culmination of all of the desires of all who have ever been focused. We're going to answer your question specifically. We want to put a little different 
twist on it so that you'll understand really what's going on here. When some say God, we mean source. Often we say to you, you are source in a physical body. But when I hear I am source, it's almost like pointing to like the outlet. Like that doesn't feel like the whole answer. Well, it isn't. You laid it out in really good questions. How does source relate to inner being? Well, the easiest way to say it is source is the culmination of all the inner beings. The reason we want to clarify it in this way, we said a little bit about this earlier, which may have been the trigger point. Source is the culmination of all the inner beings. That's yeah. their. Background. Yeah, and of all the desires that life experience has generated, its creation it's becoming and that's why when you do what you really want it feels so natural yeah because then you're a cooperative component to all of that it feels like you're just eating or you're doing something that is just in your in your bones well it's just the most natural thing in the world and the most unnatural thing in the world is to fight against the wholeness and the bigness that's why we talk about it being the energy that creates worlds humans have distorted what they think God is because they've given God a split personality with revenge and all those things on the lower half of the scale so they kind of get confused even about what it is and that's why we said earlier that your vortex is like this clearing house where you know what you don't want and you know what you do want and then when your inner being focuses on it there's only pure positive energy that surrounds that sometimes people worry as they listen to us and we say you can be or do or have anything that you want they worry that we might activate in someone some evil deed that they want to do but we say it isn't possible because what we're encouraging them to do is to connect to who they really are where only love exists there's not a source of evil like there is this source of source and source of God because it doesn't keep perpetuating because the no life is trying to be evil their inner being is always going to be pro progressional yes. positive so when someone re-emerges they leave behind all their doubt and fear and all of that stuff that makes them do those things that you call evil deeds and so it's not possible for it to be more than momentary or even generational because pure positive energy will always dominate so huge in comparison right if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next